Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. You, uh, you never know when, um, when Passover and, 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 and Easter is going to coincide, you know, because Passover is celebrated on the 14th of Nisan. And First Fruits, which is the resurrection, is celebrated on the 16th of Nisan. Those dates never change because they're in the Bible. But because God's on a lunar calendar, it changes. Sometimes it's in mid-March, sometimes it's in late March, sometimes it's in early April. So, so this year it just happens to coincide, which is, which is nice, isn't it? Yeah. But, but this isn't Jewish Easter. I don't want you to think this is Easter Shabbat. This is Shabbat. And uh, yeah, just wanted to clarify that for some people that might, you know, be wondering. Um, but by the same token, the, the, the church will be celebrating tomorrow, right? And, and as long as they're celebrating the resurrection, that's a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. As long as they're celebrating the resurrection, it's a beautiful thing. Some of you would disagree with me. Some of you agree with me. We have everything here. We have, we have people that are so into truth, they don't even see grace. We have people that are in hyper grace, they don't see truth, and everything in between. I'm staying right in the middle of the fullness of the grace and the fullness of the truth. You see where I'm standing? You see this? God gave us this emblem when we started. This was his idea. He said, stay in the fullness of the grace. You hear me? The f- not 50-50. 100% full of grace. 100% full of truth. Because if you do that, there you'll find Yeshua. How do I know that? How do we know that? The Bible says so. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he tabernacled among us who was full of grace and truth. You have to go to the Word for everything you do in your walk. If you can't, if you can't, I don't care. Look, I used to read a book a week. I stopped reading books, and I started reading this. When you're in trouble, you're going to quote this, not a book. Right? Everything we do has to be rooted in here. I'm going to read a psalm to you like I always do. I hope you're in a good mood because I don't want to uh, play um, cheerleader today. Today I want to enjoy my father. So I hope you came to enjoy my father too. Right, two of you, good. Um, This is a simple psalm. It's 11 verses, but it was the last 8, 9, 10, 11, verses 8, 9, 10, 11, the last four verses, was quoted by Shimon Kepha, the great apostle, in Acts 2, when he was giving his speech on Shavuot about Yeshua, about the Messiah, that he died and was buried and resurrected. And that's what got the people to be stung in the heart and say, what must we do to get saved? So this is, this is all about the resurrection. Um, it's, it's very prophetic in nature. So let me read. I'm sorry. You'll figure it out. There's 150 of them. You should know it. You got a 1 in 150. Psalm 16. You're welcome. To be perfectly frank with you, most of the Psalms, when you hear them open, you should know which one it is. To, To be perfectly frank. Protect me, God. For you are my refuge. Now, we can, we can absolutely relate to this, but picture Yeshua saying this, okay? As he's going through his trial and tribulation. Protect me, God, for you are my refuge. I said to Adonai, you are my Lord. I have nothing good outside of you. The holy people in the land are the ones who are worthy of honor. All my pleasure is in them. He's talking about the believers of the excellent of the earth. I have had the distinct pleasure to meet the excellent in Kenya, to meet the excellent in India, to meet the excellent in Israel, to meet the excellent in Wales, to meet the excellent in Germany, to meet the excellent in Austria, to meet the excellent in Greece, to meet the excellent in England, to meet the excellent in Nicaragua, to meet the excellent in Argentina, and I can go on. I'm just trying to tell you, you have a big family. Those who run after another God multiply their sorrows. To such gods I will not offer drink offerings of blood or take their names on my lips. Now you might say, what's in a name? 
a lot. Don't you take time to name your children and don't take you take time to name your businesses and don't you? A name is very symbolic. A name is better chosen than silver or gold. So I'm just throwing this out there. No why you're calling things what you call them. That's all I'm saying, okay? I'll leave that one alone. All right, we'll move on. I don't know in my assigned portion, my cup, you safeguard my share. Pleasant places are measured out for me. I am in content with my heritage. That means my inheritance, what's coming to me. You should be content with your heritage. You should be content with what's waiting for you. I was just on the phone with somebody this morning who's losing their mom. And sometimes we get in the way of God. I, I, I know some of the family members were, but you got to be very careful at a time like that. But sometimes when somebody's in their 80s and they're transitioning, and God is calling them home, and you're still getting the doctor to poke and prod, and then five more operations only to end up in a nursing home where they won't be visited much, and a tech will come in and change their diaper once a day, only to die a couple of months later. I'm telling you, as well-intentioned as you are with science, you're getting in the way of God sometimes, and you have to seek the Lord's will, because the Lord, I gave him, I gave him the picture, the Lord is on one knee like this, he doesn't take life. He's not snatching it. He knows the perfect time to receive it. He's receiving it. And we're getting in the way. We're putting our hand in God's chest and holding on to the person. And we mean well, but they're ready. They're already transitioning. You're speaking to them. You're wondering, are they hearing me? And I'm here to tell you, they are hearing you, but they're hearing him a lot louder. Pray. Seek the Lord. Don't make a decision on your own. It's a mistake. My mother used to say, Greg, don't let me ever end up in a nursing home. I said, Mom, it's never going to happen. Never going to happen. <sighs> Yeshua was totally content with the way he was going. This was not home. He had a job to do, but he was totally content, and that's how the psalm ends, you'll hear. I think we need to be content. We need to realize this is not it. Stop holding on. That was the reason why I wrote the book. Stop living for the here and now. You have to. You have to make eternity so real for you. She was singing happy day. Yes, this is a happy day because we know the Lord. But let me tell you a happier day when we go to be with him. And let me tell you the happiest day when he comes to establish his kingdom on earth. So it's happy, happier, happiest. That's what, guys, this is what the Bible tells you. You must believe it. You can't quote it. You can't memorize it. You have to believe it. You have to believe the Word of God more than you believe I'm talking to you right now. More than you believe you're sitting in Beth Yeshua. you got to know that you got to know that you got to know that Word, and you have to embrace it and believe it. Even when all hell is breaking loose, you have to believe it. I bless Adonai, my counselor. At night, my inmost being instructs me. Soul, your soul, your decision maker, the seat of your emotions, that's totally controlled by the Spirit of God. Yeshua's soul, was, as a man, was totally controlled by the Spirit of God. You follow? A hundred percent of the time, every waking hour, even when he slipped, he was totally controlled by the Spirit of God. That's amazing. That's amazing when you think about it because, yes, he was totally divine, but he was totally human. And in that humanness, he totally deferred every single moment of his life to the Lord's will. And we got to try to follow that. Are we going to do it all the time? No, but the more we can do it, the better off we are, right? That's all. We just need to improve. I bless, I don't know, my counselor. At night, my inmost being instructs me. I always set out an before me. With him at my right hand, I can never be moved. The right hand in the Bible is the place of power, of safety. It's all over the scriptures. Psalm 89, Psalm 20, Psalm 15, the place of honor. Psalm 80, the place of favor. Psalm 18, the place of support. That's what the right hand means. It's symbolic. It's not that he's physically at the right hand. He's at a place of power and safety and honor and favor and support. And you'll get to the last verse. So my heart is glad. Can you imagine? My glory rejoices, even in the midst of his pain and sorrow and suffering and trial and tribulation and emotional distress, more than even the physical distress. 
Emotional distress is worse than physical pain. So my heart is glad. My glory rejoices. And my body too rests in safety. Can you imagine? For you will not abandon me to Sheol. Sheol is not hell. Sheol is the grave in the Old Testament. Everybody goes there. Okay? When they say mom is dancing in heaven, she's not dancing in heaven. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that the body's in the grave. Go there a year later, you'll find it. Your soul goes to be with the Lord. So the unbeliever dies, the body is in the grave. The spirit and the soul go into a state of suffering. Luke 16, 23. The believer dies, body goes in the grave. The spirit and the soul with Messiah in heaven. 2 Corinthians 5, 8. You won't get that body till he comes back to restore his kingdom. You don't want that body anyway. So is mom dancing with the Lord? Mom is at total peace. Her soul is at rest with the Lord. Okay? Physically, she's not dancing. How does a soul dance? Your guess is as good as mine. But you got to stick with the Bible. You can't repeat things you've been told without having any biblical credence, without having any support from the Word. Is it bad? I don't know, but what else are we going to mess up? Well, there are three wise men. Every nativity scene picks, picks up on that, but it doesn't say there were three wise men. There might have been 103 wise men. Did Eve eat an apple? Did the lion lay down with the lamb? No, the wolf and the lamb. Is, is the body dancing? No, but we say these things because we've been taught this is what I push all the time. Study the Word of God. That's all you got. That's all you got. But that's all you need. For you will not abandon me to Sheol. That means he didn't remain in the disembodied state. It was a miracle. God kept his lifeless body for three days free from corruption. A miracle of preservation. It had to happen. Psalm 16 is a prophecy. It's one of the 333 prophetic messages about the Messiah. He could not stay in the grave. He had to resurrect. He had to be the first fruits. He had to fulfill that. He fulfilled Passover. He fulfilled unleavened bread. He died as the Passover lamb. He was buried as unleavened bread, the most unleavened bread there is. But he had to rise as our first fruits. And he had to ascend to, to fulfill Shavuot and send the Holy Spirit into our temples. Teruah, Kippur, and Sukkot are coming. Right around the corner. You will not abandon me to Sheol. You will not let your faithful one see the abyss. And this is how it ends. And this is beautiful. You make me know the path of life. Where is life? With the Lord. That's the path. We're going to take that path. You make me know the path of life. In your presence is unabounded joy. Listen to me. You could have some joy here in the Lord's presence, but in his presence presence do you understand the joy personified you can't fathom it i can't fathom it when your soul is connected totally connected with him and there's no issue of sin there's no issue of sorrow there's no issue of pain there's no issue of depression there's no issue of decision making there's no issue of apologizing can you even fathom that guys how could you not hold on to that vision how can you keep pressing on you won't press on, but if you hold on to that vision, you will press on to the goal to win that prize. The crown of righteousness, you will keep pressing. You won't give up. Even when you get knocked down, you will get back up. Even when I get knocked down, people say, Rabbi, you're going to be okay. I, I'm, I'll recover, I know. The Lord will help me recover. You might catch me on a bad day. You might catch me on a bad week. You might catch me on a bad season. But that's not the end of my story. And it's not the end of yours either. In your presence is unabounded joy at your right hand. There it is, is eternal delight. Pleasure forevermore. Pleasure personified. This life, I mean, how, how content can you be? This world has no contentment. It's, there'll never be enough. It'll be a 60-inch screen, then a 100-inch screen. Then, then you're going to move to Amstar because you want that screen. When is it going to stop? 
10,000 square feet, 20,000 square feet, 40,000 square feet. Some people have 60,000 square feet. I'd be worried to heat that thing. What are you going to do with all that? Home gyms and home theaters and you stay home too much. Yeshua said, go. We go from church to home, from home to church, and then we do a Bible study with other believers. How, how, it, how are we getting out there? How are we infiltrating salt and light only to preserve yourself and your family? It's, we're doing it all wrong. I'm just telling you, we're doing it all wrong. The local church was supposed to be a place to come once a week for believers to come. Not non-believers to preach the gospel. Anybody could preach the gospel inside this place. But you got to preach the gospel inside the workplace and the school place and the gym place. Yeshua never told them to come to the temple. Not once did he say, bring them to the temple. He said, go get them. You catch them, I'll clean them. And you don't get discipled inside the church place. You know why? Because you keep hearing this kindergarten message. Fill in the blanks for 20 minutes. That's not going to stimulate you. But then, if you want to be stimulated, then go and do something with it. Don't just leave here and sit around with your believing friends and go, Hallelujah, we're saved. Isn't this great? That's not Yeshua's system. They came once a week with the believers to get pumped up, to get riled up, to get filled up, to connect with one another, to get excited and motivated to go out and do the works of ministry. You don't build a building to hope they come. Build it. This isn't Field of Dreams. You gotta go get them. You know I'm not from the South. I don't fish, but I know one thing about fishing. You don't do it inside a building. <laughs> come on, let's bring some with us, yay? Let's resurrect our faith. It's not about finishing. It's about bringing others with you. In Israel, you know, the last one that finishes, the last one that gets home, he has to leave and go get the others. Because they fight together. They fight back to back. Now, I know everybody's not going to come, and I know a lot. I share the gospel all the time. I know a lot of people are not going to. Last week, I was at a wedding. I went to Rome, Georgia. By the way, for you Georgians, you're missing out on a gem if you've never been to Rome, Georgia. It's absolutely, it was rated one of the greatest, the top five towns in America. Not in Georgia, in America. Wow, does anybody, anybody, is anybody from Rome? You're from Rome? You dirty dogs. I'll switch. I'll give you the house across the street. It's not mine anyway. You want it? That place, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Stunning. Stunning. I went there for a wedding. And I sit down at the table, and I'm with my family. It was my son's best friend. So he was the best man. And the groom's father comes over and says, um, I want to introduce you to the other two people that are at your table. This is Dr. Goldstein, and this is Dr. Cohn. <laughs> and Bernadette looks at me and goes, don't. And I go. <laughs> she goes, please. Please, I just want to have a glass of wine and dance. And I go, oh, I'm, I'm going for it right now. So I said, I'm a Messianic rabbi. I'm a Messianic rabbi. Because you can't mess around with Jewish people, you know. If, you, if, you, if you're Jewish and you believe in Yeshua and you're with Jews and you don't say anything, and then a half an hour when you say something, they think you're hoodwinking. So you could be a pastor and sit there and make small talk. Like, what do you do? I'm a pastor. Doesn't matter if they're a believer, non-believer. Okay, cool. You can say anything. I'm a pastor. I'm a fireman. But you say you're a messianic rabbi to Jews and you don't get that out. So I just went, she goes, don't. And I went, I'm a messianic rabbi. I said, do you know what that is? And we talked for an hour and a half. I got to go next week down to South Florida. You'll love this. South Florida, Neve Michael, Jack Stromfeld, is my best friend. He's going to be 100. And he he's, was one of the key people in Neve Michael. He wants me on the board, but I haven't accepted yet. He's going to introduce me to every rabbi in South Florida. So Bernadette says, you're not going to go, right away. <laughs> right away. Right away. Can you imagine when Jack, he's my best friend, Hava Levine, my best friend, has come from Israel. And they go, guys, I want you to meet Rabbi Greg. And they're like, what, 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 what rabbi are you of? <laughs> Just pray for Bernadette. She's getting really tired of it. 
So I know it might not work, but who knows? Only God knows that. He says, lift him up. He's got to draw. I can't draw. So all I got to do is lift up. So I lift up. I'm not worried about who comes and who doesn't come. I'm not losing any sleep over that. All I'm doing is my part. God, you do your part. We're good. But can I just give you one hint about evangelism? Don't do it by the book. Don't do it by some course. Please, I'm begging you not to. Do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit do it. Don't figure out what to say. And don't go, well, if they say this, then I got to say that. That's not going to work. The power of the Holy Spirit. Don't have a form of religion and deny the power. That's why Yeshua had to resurrect. He didn't just resurrect to fulfill Psalm 16. He resurrected to go to send you the power so you could be witnesses. Listen, that's what the Bible says, right? Don't move till you get the power. So if he told his 12, don't go away to the power, don't you think you need the power too, kid? Or are you just going to have theology, doctrinal theology? I, I know all the doctrine, but I'm telling you, that's not going to win a soul. And if they don't even believe in the Bible, you think you're going to quote the Bible? So if I quote the Quran to you, are you going to adhere to it? It's not going to work. The power, you never know what you might say if you let the Holy Spirit take over your body. You don't know. You might say something. To, you might go, look, I don't know wh why i got to tell you loaf of bread. And they'll start bawling. And you don't have to know. Just go with the power. He said, don't do nothing. Don't go nowhere until you receive the power Oh, that's why I got to go. So you could be my martyrs. You could be my witnesses. How do you think John Huss was burned at the stake? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Steve was stoned. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what we need. That's what we're celebrating. And I hope that we resurrect the power of the Holy Spirit in all of you today. All right. I came here to try to be mellow today, but obviously... Um, Really did. Been working on it all week. I've, I'll, I'll, I'll get into it a little later. I've been working on it all week. I've been praying 10, 12 hours a day that I would, that I would mellow out. And 10, 12 hours a day for the last five days, I prayed 60 hours. Man, it didn't even come close. All right. Um, pray with me, please. Father, um, we come before you humbly and um, hungry and thirsty and excited, Father, and everything in between. Um, you are dearly loved here. I know you know that. And, and that's why I think you visit us, because we attract you. Father, I hope our tabernacles attract you today. And I hope you, you resurrect in us the power of the Holy Spirit, that we leave here with newness of life to do the, the works of ministry. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen and amen.